This is Dr. Andrew Jones. Does your dog growl every time someone new tries to pet her? Well, your dog may have fear aggression. In this video, I'm gonna discuss what fear aggression is, um, some specific behaviors you can work on to help your dog, along with some natural remedies. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. Today's guest dog in the video is Tula. We're actually gonna be discussing a fairly serious dog behavior problem called fear aggression. Um, the reason I'm doing the video, I've had a few different pet owners ask me questions about it. Are there some natural remedies? Fortunately, yes, there are. So what is fear aggression? No, aggression in general. When we think about our dogs in terms of their behaviors, I mean, it's normal to have the fight or flight response in terms of you know you're responding to a situation. You know, say for instance, the flight would be you. Here comes a big dog. What do I do? Do I fight? Do I fight with him or do I run away so I don't get uh, I don't get hurt? Uh, and, and that's a normal sort of healthy reaction. You you want in terms of we want our dogs to have that that normal type behavior. The issue, issue though becomes when we have, you know, quote unquote, sort of normal day to day situations, you know, such as somebody new coming to your house, you greeting someone, you're taking your dog for a walk, um, for instance, or maybe even going to see your friendly veterinarian, and there's your dog associates that fear. It goes from fear to, you know, they, they don't have the chance to run away or have flight, um, to then it becomes aggression and it may even turn into a bite. So some of the signs of fear aggression, I mean, initially some of the signs of, you know, someone being fearful where they're sort of hunched back, almost sort of cowering, like, as if, so for instance, you know, someone new comes in and you're seeing those signs where your dog is sort of hunched to one side. They're not, they're not, their tail isn't up, wagging, medium. I mean, they're acting nervous and fearful. Um, you might see your dog's ears down, you might see their almost sort of cowering, their head sort of down to one side. Truly here is fairly confident. She doesn't display many signs of uh, fearful signs herself. She's a pretty socialized little dog. And I think most of you watching will have a pretty good sense if you've got a fearful dog or not. And just watch dogs as you sort of walk along anywhere and meet other dogs. You get a sense of sort of who's confident and who's happy to see you with their eyes bright, they're making good eye contact. Versus dogs that are scared, they're almost sort of shy, they'll look away. You, you might reach down to pet them and they cower. And then that can lead to a situation, you know, potentially even to a bite. And that's what we want to, and that's what we want to avoid. And unfortunately, and there's you know, many reasons why it could happen in terms of why a dog becomes fear aggressive. I mean, I had seen many clients who had dogs that they were well socialized. They went through puppy training. They did everything you could think of to have a well socialized dog. And in some cases, um, a matter of sort of genetics uh, and their breed, they just turned out to be, you know, fear aggressive. But fortunately, there's a, there's a number of things that you could be doing if you've got a dog with this situation that no, there's not sort of one instant pill, instantly your dog is fixed. Uh, but knowing full well that, you know, if you commit to for seeing a positive trainer, going through the steps in terms of, of behavioral retraining, a certain amount of uh, desensitization, some sort of counter conditioning, um, you can actually have a dog that makes huge leaps and bounds, builds their confidence, and have a dog who's able to sort of greet other people and not react in that real, real, really fearful way. So my first big point is if you've got a dog that is fearful and showing signs of fear aggression, Maybe they're lifting lips, you know, in terms of the, uh, a situation that causes them fear, you know, such as someone new coming to your house or just trying to greet them, or maybe it leads to growling, maybe even biting. The first big, biggest thing is to never be punishing your dog. And that, that applies to virtually all, all situations. I mean, punishment leads to a more fearful dog, which just makes the problem 
that much worse. So if you've heard of certain trainers that advocate that, it's completely incorrect. And that's the worst thing to do. So the second thing is getting and seeking out a trainer that practice positive reinforcement. We're looking at a positive trainer. It's really important, in my opinion, that you're gonna go through a, a series of steps in terms of, of training your dog appropriately. But seeking out a trainer that has the skill set of dealing with the dog that has uh, fear aggression. Third, find out what triggers uh, the fearful response in your dog. Uh, more than likely, there's a few specific things that, that really trigger your dog to be scared and then to react in the way that, that you're not wanting in terms of maybe the growling, maybe the biting. Yeah. One of the big principles is if, if you can expose your dog that to, to far less often, so you're really putting your dog in a position to become less peer, fearful, you're going to diminish all of those, you know, fear biting or just fear aggression signs. My fourth point is trying to make your dog's environment as predictable as possible in terms of you sticking to these sort of scheduled routines, you know, where you get up pretty similar time, you take your dog out for a walk. Right, Tula, let's go for a walk. That she comes inside, she gets, you know, her similar snack or then she gets her similar food. She, you know, throughout the day, however, however her schedule is, you know, then from there, say for instance, you know, then she gets to look, goes, lies down in her kennel, has a bit of a nap, and you take her out sort of mid-morning for another long walk. But that you stick to a pretty predictable schedule, I mean, as predictable as possible. Because when you think about it, what we're really trying to do is build the confidence of these dogs. So in, in general, my experience is seeing these dogs that have fear aggression and any, any type of fearful signs is that they're, they have less confidence for whatever reason. You know, maybe they were adopted, they didn't develop a strong bond with somebody. Um, maybe they were abused in some way, you know, some real... So, um, but regardless, they've now got these fearful behaviors. In some cases, that's not the case. We don't know why, but they just have signs, these fearful signs. Fearful, say for instance, towards other people. Um, so we're trying to build their confidence and one of those big ways is, you know, those big things is that we're being very consistent. They have all these, this consistency throughout the day. They, they can, they can sort of count on you and expect things to be a certain way. And when that happens, they are less fearful. The next step I want to discuss is called ritual of behavior. And that's where, where we're trying to associate something positive um, when normally that would trigger uh, some type of fearful response. So example would be, I'm just gonna film it, would be say for instance, somebody new comes over to the house, uh, little Tula usually is really scared towards that new person, she sort of cowers and backs away and bares her teeth. So what we're gonna do is show sort of how we can set that up to be more positive, where you do a couple different type behaviors and then she associates that with being positive and then she acts less fearful. Who is it? It's Luca. <laughs> you know, like some, some nibbles. <laughs> nice. Good dog. So that's actually called a ritual of behavior. Here's somebody new comes to the house, which normally triggers aggression. So what we're doing is we're changing that up. So say for instance, you have a bag, is that what I suggest? Something that you would normally keep treats in then the person who comes to the house, they pick up the bag, they don't engage your dog at all, is the idea. Um, but your dog can look up and see, oh, there's treats in that bag. Secondly, without any eye contact and just keeping a, a, a certain distance away from, from the dog who is fearful and scared, you might just lay those treats sort of down, down on the ground, you know, next to you, but away from this, the dog who's fearful dog, your own dog, then you as the person who's the new visitor, I mean, you're not even going to engage a dog. You might just sort of, you know, slowly leave that room. Uh, your dog who is scared is going to, oh, there's treats. This, somebody new comes, I get something interesting to eat. And I don't have to ha act fearful in any way because the person who's come over is not engaging your, your dog, not you know, forcing some type of fear, fearful behavior. And so they call that a ritual of behavior in terms of you're performing a couple different rituals and you're trying to associate what normally would be a, a fearful behavior with something positive. 
Your dog gets something positive out of it, they get food, and they don't have to act scared because they're not forced into a situation where they've got to interact with someone who's come over. So, so that was sort of be part of the principle that a positive trainer would take you through those basic steps of that, you know, that desensitization, that counter conditioning, and then positive reinforcement. The last thing I wanted to mention was a specific supplement that's found in green tea. Um, it's this one here called L-theanine. I mean, it's sold for people called mental calmness. Um, the reason I'm mentioning, because I, I think it's something that you could safely give long term. And if you've got a dog that has serious anxiety, you know, in, in particular has um, like signs of fear aggression or, or those associated signs, then it's nice to think about something else you could naturally use that may sort of just decrease the level of anxiety, have your dog be a little bit more calmer, and then she's sort of less reactive to that really stressful situation. And so when we're looking at doses of L-theanine, we're looking at one to two mg per kilo. Thank you for watching this edition of the Veterinary Secrets on Fear Aggression. If you get to do so, I encourage you first to like this video, click up there to subscribe to my channel, then lastly, go ahead, click that link in the box below, and that can, I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.